Hey YouTube and everybody, how's it going man? Anyways, as you can see in front of me here, we've got the 12KW low frequency pure sine wave uh, inverter. I've got the Tesla Smart for 2 63 volt battery, a couple of fuse holders here, some wiring, and uh, I'm going to put this all together here really quick, step by step, so you guys can kind of see how to do it. And then we're going to turn this thing on, and that's pretty much going to be the end of it. i got three different camera angles, so hopefully we'll be able to pick up everything. This is a 12,000 watt, 48 volt inverter that I ordered. Nice little cheap three piece of plywood. It's our battery temperature sensor. Our AC and DRR are positive and negative battery covers. This is going to be our remote control. Nice remote. Cap 5 cord to go with it. All right, so this is a 48 volt system, so you're going to need to have a 48 volt or better battery to run this unit. So basically for 12 volts ran in series, for those of you that are new at this. Um, if you guys have any questions at the end of this, be sure to put them in the comments section down below. I want to remind everybody we got to get to 500 subscribers, so we're almost there. As soon as we get there, I'm giving away that free RAV power, uh, portable power supply. So if you haven't already signed up to win that, be sure to go to westthattechguy.com and sign up to win a, uh, a free power supply and anything else for that matter. You know, all you gotta do is like a video, subscribe to my page, go to westthattechguy.com, register, and as soon as I hit 500 subscribers, I'm gonna be doing a video and giving away that power supply. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run two a &L fuses, one on the positive, one on the negative. These are 100 amp fuses. That's all I have right now other than 200 and 250. So we're going to use those. We're going to use a couple of jumper wires. Uh, these are not what I would normally run when I hook this thing up in a permanent installation, but it's enough to make sure that the inverter is working properly because I just received it. And I've got four wires, two ANLs, 163 volt battery, which is only sitting at about 58 volts right now. But we'll hook that up and uh, this is how it goes. So I'm going to kind of fast forward some of this as it's going so it'll go a little bit faster because it's going to take a few minutes probably. But for the most part, this is how you hook up a battery to an inverter. Now, this is the same as if it were a 12 volt system or a 24 uh, volt system. This is a 48 volt inverter. Yes, I'm gonna be using a 63 volt battery, but that can be done. Anyways, um, if you guys have any questions, once again, be sure to put them in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer them. I do keep pretty active on the site. Anyway, so I'm gonna get started. I'm uh, going to have these A&L deals here. We're just going to pop these covers off. Now, I'm not doing anything to spack or code right now. I'm just going to hook these things up. That's all I really care about is getting them running. Oh, lovely. These aren't going to fit. you got to be kidding me. All right, back. Now I'm just hoping these ends are going to go over the inverter and I don't think they're going to, so I have to modify these. Yeah, I'm going to have to modify those. Well, we're just hoping these were going to fit right off the uh, Tesla battery, but... that'll 
it's fit now. Not quite there. All right, that was good. All right, we got another one, so I'm going to wire these up real quick. Uh, this isn't pretty it just it's gonna be practical for what we need it to do right now now the Tesla battery got a positive and negative and to check that which this one up here was the positive but we'll just double check it anyway it's always be safe or it's always uh, good to be safe and just double check everything there we go we got positive now for those of you uh, I don't know if you can see the meter I'll put it in this other shot maybe we can that's too, too zoomed in. Maybe we'll put it in this shot over here. There we go. Maybe there you can see it. Um, this top one's positive, bottom one's negative, at least the way we got the battery switched around. So basically where the fuse is, that's your negative on these batteries. As you can see right there, we've got a 58.1. Uh, now if I were to reverse the voltmeter, it would show a negative 58.1. Uh, that means the uh, we're reverse polarity, so we want to be up here for our positive, down here for our negative. Okay. I'm just going to snub these down a little bit. This one. So now we are connected. Let's hopefully uh, turn this on and we won't get any big old sparks or any other problems. Switches up here on the top. We've got a negative to negative, a positive to positive. Our breakers are off. And that should be pretty straightforward. Mains. Power's on. She's humming. Show me 58 volts on the battery. It's in inverter mode right now. Welcome. All right, so everything's good here. And I'm gonna grab one of the cameras to show this inverter. All right, so there's our welcome screen. AC's abnormal because it's not connected. Uh, zero voltage on solar. 240 volts, 60 hertz, low to zero, batteries at 57.6 volts, and we're in inverter mode. So let's try switching this off and going into the saver mode. There we go. Now it's saver on, and because there's no load, then we're good. And then back here is where we would connect all of our AC. Down here is our dip switches to tell the inverter what we want to do, what kind of mode we're going to be in, whether we're in, in uh, battery priority, low, all the protections are in there as well. Charge current right here. This is going to tell you if you want 100% charge at 85 amps, if you want to turn it down, uh, so you don't, you're not putting as much charge into your batteries. This is a split phase, by the way. This is 120 volt or 240 volt, so you can run it either way. I will be running at 240 myself to just uh, what my needs are. So this will be hooked up to a big battery bank. This will run my whole house, my AC, everything I need. Uh, and then I do have a whole house generator that's finally repaired. 
And so if I have any issues with the batteries, if the batteries go low, then I will, uh, this will tell, you know, I can do one of two things. Actually, I could go back to the AC power and have the AC power charge my batteries. I could have my generator kick on and charge my batteries. And it's all dependent upon how I'm going to set up this system. This is mainly just a off-grid inverter. So you're going to run 48 volts into it and it's going to provide you 220 or 120 volt AC power to your house or whatever it is you need. Yes, you can connect this to your AC power and that's how you would provide a charge back to your batteries. Um, but that's it. It's not, it's not grid tied in, uh, in that aspect. And this does have a built in um, transfer switch. So when power goes out, this thing knows to run off batteries. So uh, it would instant, instantaneously go to your batteries, unless you have it in bat battery priority mode, in which case then it would run strictly off the batteries and it wouldn't go to AC power or your grid power unless it's seen that the batteries were going low and then it would jump over to AC power. So anyways, I'll get into more of that on the next video. This is just kind of like I said, a simple, let's turn the thing on, let's get it running. Uh, I know that it's good and it's working and it's still holding now at 58.4 volts. So it's only lost about two tenths of a, of a volt since it's been sitting here in, in um, uh, save mode or battery saver mode. Anyways, everybody, so sorry for such a sloppy video. I just wanted to get this thing out of the box, hooked up, make sure that it worked and get it turned on and I thought I'd share that with you guys show you how to hook it up very quickly and easily um, you know don't let the bigger stuff you know fool you or scare you or anything along those lines you know it's just a it's just a bigger inverter that's all this thing just happens to run you know 12,000 watts versus a thousand or two thousand watts and it does have a 36,000 watt surge for 20 seconds and that is what's so killer about this thing now, I don't know if it's gonna really do that. We're about to find out here, but um, you know, it's just another inverter nonetheless. Anyways, any questions, please uh, put those down in the comment section below. If there's anything you guys know that you wanna tell me about this inverter, let me know. I, I've seen a couple of videos out there on this, but not many, so I'm definitely going to run a lot of tests on this, and I'm going to you know put those on YouTube so anybody that has one or wants one, will have all that information they need and I want to push this thing to its limits. I don't care if I, you know, overload it. I, I, I want to see what its limitations are and what it can actually do and what it can't actually do. So instead of rambling on and on and on, everybody, till next time, I'll see you, man. Thanks for watching.